Welcome back. This is Parastatal TV, the station that promotes the role of state cooperation. I am PK Wanjiro and this is a Frontline. Now, this lovely evening, I am with none other than Professor Margaret J. Muthui, who is the Vice Chancellor at Punk University, that is Pan Africa University, Christian University, rather. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, just before we went for the break, um, you, the, I remember you talked about uh, sponsorships and, uh, and, and, uh, and of course you talked about um, the various um, courses that are available. But then again, I want us to take this deeper. Um, wh what, are you, what are your core values and probably how has this helped uh, shape up, especially in your clientele? Thank you very much. Um, the, the core values of Park University and how it has shaped uh, the business we do, mm -hmm. um, Park University practices, uh, there are four things that are very important to us. Mm -hmm. uh, when we are training our students, when we are engaging our students, I'll take the first one is leadership. Mm -hmm. That sooner or later, everybody who has had some level of education, and even when you don't have education, sooner or later in our country, you find yourself in a situation where you need to provide leadership. Mm -hmm. So one of our core values is, uh, one of our core areas is ensuring that every student receives a dose of leadership, preparedness for leadership. So that's something that we have across the curriculum and it is attractive to people. Actually, I'm beginning to realize if we could package that for every program more than we are even offering, yeah. you know, but of course it's usually challenging in the sense of how much can you teach of leadership while they still are taking the other, 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 con or the other courses. But that's something that we do very well. And another thing that we also uh, uh, we are passionate about as a university is that uh, every student, as much as possible, must come out of here with an entrepreneuring mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. An entrepreneuring mind means learning to be a solutions giver. Uh -huh. Learning to see possibilities and taking advantage of the possibilities. Yes. So we train students on entrepreneuring mind. Almost all our students, I think all, take a dose of entrepreneuring because the world has changed. The world has changed. You don't finish school or university and then go get a job. Not, not anymore. It is likely that you'll spend a year, two years, sometimes even three, still finding your level in life. And if you don't know how to look for food for that, for that season, you'll starve. You'll be a burden to people. So we train people to say, what are the needs around us? And on and on. So there's a way the teachers sharpen our students on entrepreneuring. Okay? Another thing we, we really value is that, I say we really value, is values. Yes. <laughs> we, re, we, we know that even when you are a first class student, brainy, great, you cannot go very far without values. So we are not embarrassed about our values, the values we, we train students on integrity, honesty, hard work, and, and all the values that are exposed in the Bible. We really believe those values in the Bible are for generation after generation after generation. We believe that they apply whether you are in Western world, in Africa, wherever. We believe that whether it's younger or older, if you embrace integrity, for example, you go far. You go far in life. If you embrace hard work, you go far in life. If you embrace humility, that's another great value that sometimes we lack. If you embrace it in your life, you go very far in life. So we, we train our students, all our students take a course called spiritual formation. Okay. Because there is no human being that will be formed well without spiritual impact or spiritual help. So we have that course and we teach it to all our students. And mind you, I don't just train Christians here. I have people even of other faiths. But that is a program that we do for all the students. We do know, we believe, we know that it really helps people to navigate and steer life better. God has helped us. I meet people who, who are training here and, and uh, many years ago. And they say, oh, I, I learned this at PAC. I learned this at PAC. So we ensure that the Christians hold the same values as the university expo exposes yeah. for them to be able to uh, 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 teach to the, 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 ch the students, the, the younger people, and uh, not really younger because some of the students are not young, but to the students. So, so we, we, those are the values that have taken us places because more and more parents are realizing it's not so much about the degree. And actually, if you talk to a parent who has, let us say, the third child, yeah. you realize, hey, this thing called education is good. 
but education without values, education without taking care of the person so that the character is part and parcel of what goes on in this growth. Soon, any parent who is raising a third child will tell you, mm, I know character is so important. Sometimes we overlook it when you are running with one child and you're thinking it's education and the qualification. No, no, no. I'm a parent of four. Three are grown up children. And I tell you that without any hesitation. If you are raising young people, raise them to go for the very best in terms of profession, in terms of studying, in terms of levels of education, but work so hard on character as well. Because you combine the two in a human being, that person is dynamite. They go out to the world, they can, they can take care of the people in society, they, can, they, can, they actually do what we call sometimes exploits. They do exploits for their nations, for their countries. And that's why sometimes when I see this, I'm so grateful for our government when I see some of our ministers doing exploits yes. for this country. Yes. As a private university, we've benefited a lot from government. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, in terms of um, support to be on quality education, support on quality assurance mm -hmm. in our programs, mm -hmm. there's a body called CUE. Mm -hmm. It has really worked with us. If there's a university that has benefited from CUE, it is this university. They visited us so many times, and we love their visits, because they tell us, sharpen this, shape that, shape that, and we've been doing it, and it really helped us. Then come to the leadership of the central government. A lot of help we get from government. So we really appreciate the leadership, particularly currently. Mm -hmm. I can tell you we celebrate. Recently, we, we, I was observing something where there used to be a dichotomy, a sharp dichotomy between private universities and public. And sometimes, mm -hmm. to, the f to the extent where you feel there is a despise or disadvantage to private. Mm -hmm. And yet private universities are building the nation. These yes. are entrepreneurs who are saying, I can provide education. I can join in and support this country to get education. Mm -hmm. But right now, that, dichot that dichotomy is being removing. It's being removed so that the government and the people of Kenya can work together. Whether you are in private, whether you are in public service, you're really serving our nation. It's the same people, it's the same people, taxpayers, our children, our families, our communities. So as, as Park Universities, we celebrate the support of our government. We celebrate even through higher loans board, now that we get our students get higher loans board, yes. we celebrate many things. How do you measure your impact and, and some of the success stories probably that, uh, that you can share with our viewers? I really like that question because that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. Yes. If you don't make impact, mm -hmm. you, you, it's like, why are you then in business? Why are you then in it? Mm -hmm. Bottom line, that is how do you measure impact? Park University, we measure impact by tracing our students over time. Mm -hmm. Right now, we've just even in the meeting I've just come from, we were uh, looking at the tracer studies. Mm -hmm. Tracing our students to say, the class, the people who graduated on such an year, what are they doing in society? Who are they? Where are they? Yes. What, are, what impact are they doing? So that if you find a student that goes, some of them even go into uh, philanthropy, mm -hmm. some of them go into social work, some of them go into uh, the pulpit, which is again training and helping people on issues of values, mm -hmm. and on and on. And recently I went to Canada in April, mm -hmm. and I met two Canadians, I, I met actually several uh, alumni of this university. Yes. Two of them really caught my attention. One was a Ugandan, one was a Ghanaian. Yes. The Ugandan married a Ugandan and the Ugandan was also a student here. Then the Canadian and the Ghanaian married a Canadian. So, but they are now based in Canada. Yes. Just to hear what they are doing in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the, actually what uh, made me know them was the Canadian saying, there's something these two guys are doing that is so different. What they have done is, what the Ghanaian started a church. He's a PhD holder. He's a thoroughly trained person. So he did not go into that because he lacked what to do. Yeah. But he's a PhD holder. He studied here, an undergraduate, and then went elsewhere, and he's a PhD holder. But he's, he's running church in a way that is so admirable to the Canadians that they're saying, we don't know what he's doing. He's attracting younger people to the church again to listen and gain values in a, in a context where the church could almost, you know, in other contexts, yeah, it's looked down, down on. So really impact in society like that, because what those people are doing is getting values again to society, mobilizing society to getting to, towards good, and on and on. So I'm seeing that in terms of those who have trained in Bible and theology, those who have trained in counseling, I've told you about committee. Surely if, if 
counseling an, an inmate in, in committee until by the time a year or two ends, let's say a year, they feel again they are gaining their dignity. Isn't that impact to society? Absolutely. If working with young people, the way we, we have a lot of programs with young people, is not impacting society, so we measure our impact by what the people are doing. Not so much what money they are making. If they make money, that's good. Yeah. But it's really, what are some of the professions they go into? What are they doing with their lives? Are some of them giving themselves to society? Are they making a difference, making a change in society? If I name some of the people, Bishop Oginde, Dr. Oginde, yes. he trained here. Wow. And I think he's making an impact in leading yes. a whole nation in, in the things he does through the church that he leads or the organizations that he does. Yes. Think of the bishops of, of, of some of the churches like uh, uh, this Deliverance Church. We have quite a number that have trained here. And if that is not impacting society, and I think they are impacting society, think of others who are in business. We've just been talking about people like Monica Matiri a minute yes. ago. Yes. Yeah, you, many people know about her. She trained here, and she says training here has made her a better worker and a leader where she is, a better worker. And surely if you are a better worker, I'm building the nation. Even the employer yes. is happy. Yes, yes. So we are building, so yeah. making an impact. So we use such things to gauge whether we are making an impact. Another thing I use personally to gauge, if I find my graduates loitering looking for jobs, mm -hmm. then I know we are not making an impact. Okay. Yes, and, and, and we rarely get a Park University graduate looking for jobs, loitering. Mm -hmm. Because they are, they, in many respects, they are well trained to make an impact. So it's like, if they're, they're easily absorbed in industry, and therefore they, I believe they are making impact out there in, in industry. Yes. Uh, I believe uh, there, are, there are people watching and uh, they are asking, when is the next index? So probably tell us something <laughs> about the index, because I'm sure there are some of the viewers who've really been convinced by your success story. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we do three index in a, in a year. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, we have two campuses. Those who are in town and love being close to town, we have a campus on Valley Road. Yes. And then we also have this campus in Thika Road, Risambo. Our intakes are three in a year. January, that's when we do a good main, uh, you know, no, all of them are main these yeah. days. We, there was a time when we used to say September was the main time. No, no, not anymore. Uh, in January, we do our intakes. In May, we do our intakes. Or rather, put it differently. In March, we are admitting students. Okay. March and April. And then in May, they start class on the first week of May. Okay, and then in, in, in August, we start admitting people in July. Like now, now, right now, we have been admitting people and it's going on. And then in August, through August, we admit people. They start in September. Okay. And then also, we admit people in November, in through December, and then they start in January. January. Yes, nevertheless, I have students who are in special programs who come during the holiday. So the admissions also, you can come anytime and seek such admissions, particularly the Master of Arts in Leadership, which is a distance learning program. They come here during the holiday to, to have the face-to-face -face contact with the teachers. Those who are doing PhD, they also come here during the holidays. So their intakes are different from what I have said, but they will, they will fall within certain ry rhythms that, that we have. We also have students who are out there, have over 2,000 students in the field doing transformational church leadership programs. Uh, so again, their intakes are slightly different, different slightly different, but they need to identify where they are, whether they such a, such a program, and then they get into the class. And normally they are, they are, their intakes are done within the university, but they start their learning at different times in the year. Okay. Yeah, so we welcome as many people who would be interested in joining PARC. Yes. We look forward to them coming to experience good education, mm -hmm. education that we are telling them, if you are not happy with what we, we can return your money. Okay. Yes, because we are committed to offering them quality. Mm -hmm. We are committed in uh, helping people grow, mm -hmm. you know, especially younger people. Yes. Uh, really my passion, personal passion, mm -hmm. is to see a younger person enter the gate, stay for three years, and by the time they go, they are, they are not only clever, you know, mentally, but they are also wholesome in character. Yes, yes, when you see that combination is powerful, very powerful. Okay. Uh, probably uh, there's something else uh, that uh, I, I would like to, to find out. Apart from uh, the courses uh, that are offered here, is there uh, probably any other facilities that, uh, that are available uh, within the campus? Yes, mm -hmm. thank you very much. As I mentioned earlier, any university looks for sources of revenue. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that you for you for you to run to the invest the university well. Yes. Park is very fortunate. We have several. Uh, 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 avenues that we do that, but one of them is also meeting a need in society, providing guest houses. You know, right now you see where we are. It is right on the super highway. It is a very nice campus and compound. So we have a guest house in the compound uh, that can, at some time, I can take 40 people, comfortable 40 people. During the holidays, when students are many students are not here, I may even push it to 100. So we actually can do uh, conferences, mm -hmm. we can do weekend events, we can, soon we'll be doing weddings as well. We used to do weddings on this campus, just here, but uh, because of the noise of weddings, yes. we stopped it a bit, but now we have reorganized our space okay. so that we can also do weddings again. Excellent. Yes, and, and so there are guest houses, and uh, the, the price again is Park University, we don't pitch ourselves very high, mm -hmm. but we give you quality. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of people that use our facilities are also international people. So that's pa partly because of security. We have very good security. But let me mention another facility okay. that we have. We have, um, we do consultancy work. Okay. Because of the concentrated capacity that I have here with the lecturers, we do consultancy work of various kinds. So we have a consultancy arm. So if you want, if you're in within the industry and you're wondering, I want a research on this, I want a survey on this, I want training on this. And, and especially in the areas of the, 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 that we specialize in, mm -hmm. like in business, aspects of business, yes. aspects even of security. Now we are also doing security, consultancies in security and other, another aspect. So if, you, if there's in, people in industry, they are wanting people to do research for them, okay. to do training for them, to do uh, 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 motivational talks for them. Okay. I have a pool, we, we have an, a wing called the uh, uh, CBL. That is, remind me, CBL is, um, uh, business Leadership Center, Corporate Business Leadership Center. Okay. I have a director there, Dr. Pio, he runs that for us. So those are some of the things that we, we have in the university and we welcome Kenyans to join us. All right, uh, great. Now, I would like you to talk to Kenyans as, as you give us uh, your parting shot. Uh, that's your camera. Uh, talk to Kenyans and uh, convince them why they need to come and study at Park University. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I want to uh, thank all Kenyans who are already studying at Park University, and not, or not only Kenyans, although non-Kenyans who are studying at Park University. This is an, uh, a cosmopolitan place. It's a place where there are many nationalities. I invite them to study at Park University because this is a place where you'll get value. This is a place where you'll get friendship. It's a place where you matter to us. You know, you matter to the university. We pursue every student to know how they are faring. We pursue every staff member to know how they are faring. And uh, I welcome Kenyans. And I want to especially speak to parents who are looking for places for their children to study. I'm thinking of people who are having Form 4 leavers. We have a special program for, four leave, for Form 4 leavers for three months. Normally, we run it from January to April. I call it the stepping stone before you go out to university. It is a, a place where we really mentor and work with young people after, after high school. So I, 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 in, I encourage parents to consider Park University for their young people, but I also encourage parents who are saying to themselves, I can be better. This is a place to be better. They can come to evening class, we have evening classes, we have day classes, and we, then we sometimes have Saturday classes. It can be in, here in Roisambu or in Valerod. So Karibu Sana. We are passionate about building Kenya, but building Kenya with value and commitment. So come and join us. We will be, we will be very glad to participate with you and to train together. And I say train together because of, I'm a teacher and I know when you're teaching, it is not just about the student learning. The teacher is constantly learning. So Karibu Sana. Thank you so much. Uh, this is the Cosmopolitan University where you not only get out of this place with a degree or maybe a diploma or even maybe a PhD, but you also get to learn about leadership skills and not only that, your character will be developed and of course, they care so much about the values and, and investing heavily on the students that are usually study at Pan-African Christian University. This has been Frontline and I have been your host, PK10. Till next time, do have yourselves a lovely evening.